What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, Transformers 1, Brian, everybody... I've, I've seen the Rotten Tomato scores. Everybody's talking about this movie is good. Right? And then you send me... Uh, you send me the show notes. And you say... Transformers 1 is doing well with critics. But not at the box office, Brian. So it begs to ask the question, what's going on, Brian? What is happening? Is the is the IP, Brian, not as favored anymore because we've been doing Transformers for this long already, right? And they just it's just not people are looking for the next thing, right? It could be people wanting to move on. We got this Voltron, we got these Thundercats, we got this other stuff happening. <clears throat> and Transformers is just not it anymore. What are your thoughts, Brian? What do you what do you think is going on at the box office with Transformers when we happen to get decent films and yet still there's no interest, perhaps? Okay, so there's two different points here. One is Transformers one as a product, and then there's Transformers IP in yes. general. I'm very pleased to report. I love Transformers 1. Didn't like, oh, wow. loved Transformers wow. I was really impressed okay. with what they accomplished in this film. Uh, my kid loved it. My wife loved it. Wow. Um, I'm happy to go. I talked to a friend today who was a Transformers fan, hadn't seen it yet. He was like, would you go see it again with me? I was like, absolutely. Like, I'll go tomorrow. Wow. That's the good news. <laughs> Bad news is... This film fell short of the lowest tracking numbers that were out. And it's about to be obliterated by the wild robot worldwide next week. Which means this movie is certainly going to lose money, come and go. I have hope it will find a second life on TV. Mm. Because it is legitimately good. Like, it is worth checking out. And if you miss it in the theater, like, rent it, watch it, stream it on Paramount Plus or wherever you can get it. Like, you will not be disappointed with your, you know, hour and 40 minutes. Um, but I do think it begs the question in light of how, you know, and this was much better than rise of the beasts, mm -hmm. but it begs the question of just how relevant transformers are in general. Like, is this an eighties icon cartoon? That's kind of had its moment in the sun. Yeah. And maybe we saw the peak commercially with the Michael Bay films, love them or hate them. Mm -hmm. And we're just never getting back there again. Yeah, I don't think so. I there is a feel of that. Yeah. And I think part of it too is like I asked, you know, I asked my kid. My, my kid's almost ten, right? So she's in the sweet spot, and she's grown up because she's mine. She's grown up with all this stuff. She yeah, loves yeah. all of it. She has seen. So here's the other thing: if you go on Tubi, they have all of the Generation One, all five seasons for free. Oh, nice. So my kid has watched the first two seasons, which are like the original cast, the pre-movie. Mm -hmm. She's probably watched every episode three times by now. Wow. Wow. She likes it, even though she looks at it and makes fun of the old animation and the yeah, mistakes yeah, yeah. and silliness. Yeah. She really likes the, the characters and the basics of the story. So when she went to this movie, she got everything. There are a lot of nods to the original cartoon. There are lines and little nods to the movie. She understood all of it. Okay. And therefore she was pointing at the screen. She's like, dad, like, she's like, look over there. Like that's Wheeljack hiding in the background. Like mm. she got all that. I don't think most kids her age would notice any of it because they just haven't grown up on Transformers. And I don't think their parents, even if they watch Transformers, have really given that to their kids. It's been supplanted by Paw Patrol or Disney yeah. or something else, which is a shame because this is legitimately really well done. Like the animation is really good. It's different than you've seen. They found Paramount did a really nice job of finding a style for this film okay. that looks very tactile considering it is animated um but it's definitely not live action it doesn't look silly at any point mm -hmm. and the characters the writing's not bad like 
there's real emotion when you see Optimus and Megatron starting to diverge from being best friends and finding these different paths in, in the world that leads them to their first conflict with each other. Yeah. It's better done than I thought they could do it. Interesting. Right down to, honestly, I was skeptical when they were like, Chris Hemsworth and Brian Tyree Henry are going to be the voices of these yeah. characters. Yeah. But to their credit, both of them evolve their voices as the characters evolve. To when you get to the end, Hemsworth is not channeling Peter Cullen, but he definitely changes his inflection. He sounds more like Optimus Prime. And Brian Tyree Henry sounds more vengeful and rageful as Megatron. And the best one is actually, I'll spoil this, not it's fine, is Starscream. They, they show a scene of why Starscream's voice is raspy the way it was in the cartoon. And Steve Buscemi, who's doing the voice of Starscream, that changes his voice to where you're like, oh, that actually sounds a little bit like Generation 1 sounds uh, Starscream. So I I highly recommend if you, right. you know, if you have a child I, I, age, I, I told my, age I told my son I'm going to I highly take recommend him. you go see it. Like, is it a five-star film? No, but it's a solid four for me. And I'm like, I in the Transformers world, we've been given a lot of garbage quite honestly, on big, on the big screen. So to get something that was yeah. legitimately start to finish satisfying, uh, yeah, I, I am I will defend this movie to, to the nines. So what's your star rating? Four. I think it's a solid four. And like, I okay. would beg Paramount because I don't think the box office is going to justify them doing a sequel, even though I think, I think this, mo this story arc is tailor-made for a trilogy. Um, they did this was an origin film. They leave it perfectly set up for you to see the war on Cybertron, which you kind of really haven't seen on a grand scale, which would be number two. And, num and they could basically number three, they could bring it to Earth and basically redo the pilot of the cartoon and end it. That would like, be it's dope. right there. Like this is set up to go in three brilliant films if they wanted to do it. I beg them if they don't get a chance because the box office isn't there, put it on Paramount Plus and make it a TV show. Do it because the animation is would be great. I don't think they could get the voices back and that's fine. You could change the voices again. But I would love to see this iteration of the characters carried through, especially with the way this movie leaves you because so many of the classic characters are either teased or introduced by the end. I think you do something similar with um i think you put i think you try to relive those um certainly like x-men 97 put those uh tv shows like the transformers and have kids watch them and with the the success of well the i guess the success with critics and fans who have seen the film and have praised it the way they have We'll definitely go back for another movie if they go that route, Brian. And I think uh, <clears throat> when it's released on the streamers, uh, it perhaps will pick up that second wind and uh, give the executives what they want, which is an audience so that they can sell a, a possible second film and, and know that perhaps they'll have a better feeling and chance of knowing that they'll do better on the second one if they continue down this road. The other thing, I mean, you know, if we're thinking just purely commercially, I thought the design, because the designs of these were, I thought, very, they honored the Generation 1 tradition very well without simply remaking exactly, note for note, those characters. Mm -hmm. They should be able to sell some toys off of this unless this IP is just so dead the kids won't pick them up anymore. But because you can still find plenty of Transformers. You can, there's actually too many Transformers toys on the shelves and they're poorly made. I got to be honest. That's like, I, I have spent time trying to get my kid Transformers toys and we have a few, but compared to the ones I had, which were mostly metal growing up, they are not mm. well made today. And they're very annoying in a lot of cases to actually transform. So I thought this movie opened the door for like, you could actually have some really good fun toys off of this, which might also mm. breed interest, but it'll be a shame if this is a one and done really will be like i'll be sad if this doesn't go anywhere because they did a nice wow. they did a nice job and everyone affiliated should be proud of what they what they accomplished 
All right, cool. I'm I'm definitely gonna go see it uh, this week or next week. With uh, I'll probably take my youngest if I'm te- definitely taking my oldest son because he's been wanting to see what to see this, and I just didn't give it that much hope. And then all this word about this being fantastic and you, Brian, <clears throat> uh, really liking it as well. I not liking it, loving it. I, I have to take a look at it. Um, but it goes to the broader question, though, like. Do you think, I mean, you and I have been we're finally getting Voltron. We're excited about it. You know, we're getting Thundercats. We're excited about it. But is that era of television just not saleable? Any, like, Because none of the G.I. Joe stuff ever really worked. Now, granted, none of it was really good, right? But it, it, that hasn't really taken off. They're trying to cross over in live action now, Transformers and G.I. Joe. We're skeptical of that. You know, He Man, we're questioning the relevance, but it kind of feels like all the stuff from our childhood, we still love it. But does anyone else, still, does a broader audience really want to see adaptations from that era? Because it doesn't seem like any of those are really, really selling. I mean, the biggest seller was probably Barbie, and I don't really count that as necessarily just the eight. It wasn't really an 80s cartoon. So yeah. I don't know. Like, I think it's just that era is not carrying over. I think this is just an. A moment of inspiration due to the success of the of Mario Brothers, bringing old IP back and do, and having a hell of a success with it, and seeing what else can they do, what haven't they done, and they haven't done Voltron, they haven't done uh, these other ones that uh, done the cast. They, they, there's a bunch that they haven't done. I'm still waiting for John Hamm and Space Ghost. I'm still waiting for that. That's easy right there. That's easy money. A comedy? You kidding me? Uh, so there's po- there's possibilities, Brian. And I think, again, with the success of Super Mario Brothers, and they've been in just there's been announcements of other stuff. So I think they're just shooting their shot. I think with what they got. But Mario is at the advantage of living on through video games. So I would True. argue that the generations that came after know the mario world and i would argue that as it went 3d went to switch it it has found yeah. new audiences yeah. zelda is the same way right there's a reason they keep making that 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 continues yeah. to cross generations and i think that movie could be phenomenally successful yeah. um it, it there have been a ton of they're always making transformers series but i gotta be honest yeah. i checked out a few of them with my kid just to see i thought they were all pretty bad the ones that I saw. I've heard some are better. I haven't taken the time to watch every one of them. But when yeah. I watched a few of them, I mean, call me crotchety old man in the rocking chair on the porch. But I was like, none of these hold a candle to G1. Like, not even yeah. close. Yeah. That's why I stopped watching after G1. I stopped watching. I just saw the Transformer movie. You got the touch. I saw that one. And and there's not, there's been nothing after that that I've been wanting to watch other than Michael Bay's first Transformers, which I thought was great. Yeah. And then the horribleness that came after that, you know, I just couldn't do it anymore. And uh, Bumblebee, Bumblebee was a good movie, but not again, nobody really came out. Right? Yeah. I think it's just, yeah, that's a great example of, I feel like, I feel like if, if Transformers last night, Age of Extinction. If those movies had not happened, my theory is Bumblebee probably would have done better. Mm-hmm, I think by mm-hmm. the time that movie came, people were so tired of the Bay verse that they were like, they almost missed. And because this Bumblebee basically looked pretty much the same as from that yeah. one, I think people were just like, this is another Michael Bay movie. And they didn't realize that it was actually a much more thoughtful yeah. film. Um, which is why I thought they were smart to try this as like a higher end animated production. But then Rise of the Beast might have, maybe Rise of the Beast ruined it for them because like that was disappointing, did yeah. disappointing. Yeah. And then this comes out a year later and people are like, I'm, tr- I don't need another Transformers anything. <laughs> That's it. They're done with it. Yeah, but let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of... Uh, did you see Transformers 1? Let us know in the comment section below. Brian, before we end this, let's real quick talk about... Um, Another Daisy Ridley. State of the franchise. Yeah. Another franchise discussion. Are we done? Are oh. we done? I think so, Brian. I, they, 
you have to do I, people can't move past the skywalkers and if you move past the skywalkers what story are you telling if you're not giving us you're not going to give us Darth Vader again we're not going to we're not going to see these people uh, ever again mm-hmm. unless they reboot right and do something whatever Brian but nobody cares and now this Daisy Ridley movie a Star Wars film continuing on her saga, her lie of being a Skywalker. I read an article where Kathleen is Kennedy Kathleen Kennedy is writing notes on the script and, and it's like, didn't she approve Acolyte? Isn't this this isn't this her th- you know what I'm saying? It's like isn't she in charge of Lucas film? <laughs> Brian, what's going on? Well, I know if people go back to our old shows, you will find comments from us saying when they announced this movie and then they were like, no, it's happening. And they confirmed it. They're fast tracking. I remember, I know we said it Mm -hmm. until this movie is up on the screen. (laughs) Do not count on it happening. And sure enough, (laughs) it's been delayed indefinitely. So on hold, it was supposed to, remember, it was supposed to shoot this year. That was what we were being told. And I was yeah. uh, just was like, I'm not that stupid. <clears throat> and sure enough, it's not being shot this year. The person who's supposed to be writing it, Stephen Knight. It, now he has a much more, uh, he has a much more tangible project. He's the creator of Peaky Blinders, very good Netflix, uh, BBC uh, crime series with Killian Murphy. That is getting its movie to kind of wrap up the series. He's the writer and director, a writer and director, I believe, of that. He's going to go do that because that's actually going to happen. <laughs> and he's left this script behind. Damon Lindelof. Just like, took just his, like Destin Daniel Cretton moved on to Spider-Man 4. Damon Lindelof was supposedly writing this for a while. He's now working on Lanterns. Funny how that keeps happening <laughs> in Kathleen Kennedy's world. This is not happening. Yeah. It's not. It you know, and the and the report that you're referring to saying that all of the script drafts have been submitted and Kathleen Kennedy's had notes upon notes, which I mean she's the producer, you're gonna have notes, but like the idea is that she's kind of meddling a lot in this. There was also a rumor now they're saying the director's still attached, Charmaine Obid Chinoy. There was a rumor she had been fired. Mm-hmm. Um uh, I do not see this project happening. I think it loses money for sure if it does. Uh, I think there's too many ways to lose. Uh, I think it loses from the standpoint of why are we getting a Jedi Academy movie that's not Luke Skywalker's Jedi Academy? It's, you know, to your point, like, why are we continuing the saga of a trilogy nobody liked by the time we left it? Yeah. And then there's the whole, you can get into the whole, you know, again, well, you do a Jedi, if you want, right? If yeah, you want that. if you do a Luke Skywalker Jedi Academy with with Sebastian Stan, right? Let's say you were to do that hypothetically, you got that. By the end of that film or two films, whatever, you have something to break away from and continue the story if it's dope, which I would assume it would be, right? Because right now. There's nothing to really be excited for other than an attempt to resurrect a franchise, Brian, that is, dare I say, dying. That's tough. And they're doing this Mando Grogu movie. I think that will be a hoping. Yeah, I think that one will happen. But I think it'll be a lot of success. I don't think it's going to be you know, a billion five move. Mm. I mean, Mandalorian, Mandalorian mm. TV audiences were down, dro- were dropping pretty, you know, meaningfully in the, in, as, in the third season. And a lot of people didn't like the third season. Yeah, because they were over it. They're over the, this Grogu evolution. If you, well, lack I'm of telling ev- you, lack of evolution. Yes, exactly. If, if he ain't talking in this next joint, Brian, I'm sorry. <laughs> I got to hear some dialogue. That's it. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't want these new upgrades to him. Nope. I want to see him use the force and, and, and really 
maybe or maybe not struggle with that. To me, that's uh, more of an intriguing story with that that character. But this goes to the like, who's asking for this? Please tell me. Like really, like, and I understand that you could say like, oh, you know, and we heard the met, we heard you know the director's take of like, you know, we need to have, you know, kind of the female Star Wars take, and like, need. I'm I'm sorry, but I feel like you are you are alienating as much of the audience as you're embracing when you lead with that on the title card. Yeah. Um, and we went through it. If we include this in the umbrella of the female led action superhero discussion, we went through how tough that's been, how difficult a road that's been to pull off in Hollywood. And I'm not saying that's all right and fair. I'm just that those are the facts. Like, you know, of, of box office through through history. Yeah. I do not think there was a mass of support or outcry for this character to be given a continuation. Yeah. And it feels like they're doing it for the wrong reasons. And it feels like they're doing it almost to like go back and retcon and make amends for whatever the fans felt about Rise of Skywalker. And I'm like, that's a mistake. That that almost yeah. never works. I don't think that. No, no, the only thing that we do know is that Kathleen got to go. That's what we know. You know, that. Yeah, well, we agree on that. I think one of the challenges, as I've thought about it, one of the challenges is that George picked her. I mean, that, that probably is one of the, like, elephants in the room that, like, she was his handpicked successor. Now, I would mm-hmm. argue part of the reason you buy control of the IP from him is so that you don't have to do what weigh he that factor yeah. when you want to push her out. But... Yeah. And uh, yeah, and the only hope I guess people have is Dave Filoni and uh But Filoni as a Filoni, who's the other guy? Favreau. Favreau, yeah, John Favreau. But Filoni as a big screen architect, completely unproven. Completely yeah. unproven. No. Yeah. I mean, we've talked about even in the TV landscape where he's gotten a little inconsistent. He's generally good, but like Ahsoka, Mando, like up and down. There's up and down in there. Like, it's not like, you know, hey, this is going, Mando Grogu's automatic critical darling and commercial monster. Yeah. Yeah. Favreau's not really showing that he wants to like direct a ton of these. Yeah. Yeah, I think the only way those guys get to do something like this and really enjoy it is that it's if they have complete control. Right now, they're under the, you know, they can't do anything. What they can't do what they want. They have to follow some yeah. instructions in order for them to get things out. And I don't think for them, they're past that already and want to do what they want, what they think is going to be dope. Well, they yeah, and I, it, I guess John Favreau is definitely proven it. You know, it's so funny. Like the, the further we get from the accolade, and you know, I'll never rewatch it, but it makes me angry because I feel like there was a pretty easy opportunity there that they just lit on fire. Yeah. Like I'm sorry, like I. I will, I will, I will always ride for Star Wars Kung Fu as an idea. Yeah. And once we saw the show, the show centered on the wrong character. Full yeah. stop. Manny Jacinto's character is the character that should have been the lead of that show. Yeah. A manless Stenberg's character did not belong in that show wrong character yeah. Manny yeah. just said, when you see him for those brief moments where he's fighting the one episode where he's able to talk and really talk about his motivations that's the show and if you yeah. couldn't realize that in the writer's room or the director's chair you're an idiot I'm sorry you're an idiot because it was so blatant which means yeah. if you overrode that 
to do all the other stuff, that gets back to the, why are you doing this? Man. Are you doing this to make a great Star Wars show? Or are you doing this for other reasons? Man. And I think this show's only legacy will be that it was all about the other reasons. Yeah. Yeah, let us know in the conversation below what you guys think of um, the Star Wars franchise and where this, I mean, we can all say safely say that this obviously is not going to, this movie with Daisy Ridley and the continuation of her story is not going to continue. And if it happens, it will be a setback to the cause, not a help. I don't know if they're going to take right now for them is too risky. That is more risky for them to do that than to try to do an acolyte season two. I mean, Ewan McGregor is telling everyone he wants more Obi-Wan. <laughs> they, they don't seem to want to give him more Obi-Wan, but he's telling everyone he wants to do more Obi-Wan. His hand is up. They, they missed that opportunity right there. Man. I know. Again, anyway. right? It's the story yeah. of the universe. You go through it. It's like there's a world where some of this stuff is pretty good and we're pretty happy and having a different conversation. Yeah. But let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of all this. Star Wars... Uh, Transformers 1, what's happening with these franchises? Because are, are they being laid to rest? Because they can't squeeze. There's no more juice to squeeze. <laughs> the juice is over. But let us know in the comment section below what you guys think, and we'll see you next time on the Ninja Report. The show goes on!